Hey, this is Dr. Scott Watson with a finale tutorial video. In this video, we're going to be discussing how to create a simple lead sheet. This is going to only involve the melody and no lyrics or chord symbols uh, like a, a more full-fledged lead sheet might have. So just getting started with note entry, but we will discuss two types of really uh, helpful note entry methods that's used in Finale, and one is the, the speedy entry tool, and then the other is the hyperscribe tool. So we'll compare um, how uh, a Finale user might use both kinds of note entry for this simple lead sheet. We're going to typeset the folk song orally. Let's get started. I like to start my Finale projects with the launch window. If the launch window does not launch when you launch Finale, go ahead to the file um, menu and choose launch window. From there, we're going to choose setup wizard and use some defaults like the engraved style, portrait view, hit next. Here we'll have to choose a treble clef non-transposing instrument. That's what we want for a lead sheet. We want the melody in treble clef, but we don't want a transposing treble clef instrument like clarinet or alto sax. So I'm going to use oboe. Could have used flute, violin, voice, whatever. And then we have to add that instrument to our one staff score, right? The score is only going to have one staff, that instrument. All right, we'll hit next. And then let's put in the title, Aura Lee. And for composer, we're just going to put folk song. All right, we could have put traditional, something like that. Um, I'm going to put under arranger, I'm going to put entered by and my name. That might be something you do. Um, we don't need to have the copyright notice or any of those other things there. All right, next. Okay, Aura Lee is in 4-4, four, four, so that's already chosen. Aura Lee is in the key of E flat major, which is three flats. So we'll hit the down arrow. Up arrow with sharps, right? But we're going to hit the down arrow for the three flats. Uh, the only tempo we have is that the quarter note equals 76. So there is a beats per minute metronome marking, but there is no expressive marking like allegro or lively fast, you know, something like that, or slow and um, moderate tempo. So we'll just use quarter note equals 76 as the only tempo marking. There is no pickup. Well, I happen to know that this is a 16 measure lead sheet, so we'll we'll say that 16 measures. We could we could delete the measures later if we left it as 31, which is Finale's default, I believe. All right, and then finish. Okay, so what we're going to get is the shell of our lead sheet. Um, I'm going to use uh, Command Plus to to sort of zoom in a little bit. Could have also gone to the View menu and 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 zoomed in. Uh, but I like the, the shortcut Command Plus and Command Minus. Okay, and uh, let's get rid of some things that we don't need for this lead sheet. So I'm going to use the Selection tool, and I'm just going to get rid of the word Score. You know, I'm going to use the Selection tool also to get rid of the word Subtitle. I'm just hitting the Delete key on my keyboard. That's what uh, deletes those things. And I'm going to get rid of the Staff name by using the Staff tool. That's this uh, treble clef icon and at least on my version of Finale it is, and then go to the Staff menu, and I'll say um, Edit Staff Attributes. Now, I could have also used the shortcut, um, just double-clicking with the Staff tool, double-clicking in any measure. It opens up the Staff Attributes dialog box. So, you know, whether you go to the Staff menu and choose Edit Staff Attributes, or whether you just double-click in a measure and open up staff attributes. We want to turn off the staff name and score. When I do that, when I turn it off, notice that the word oboe doesn't appear there anymore. Okay, let's get rid of this indent because in our lead sheet, we don't have the indented first system. So for that, I'm going to use the page layout tool. Page layout has these handles and that's what you can use to drag over and get rid of the indent, right? You can also use the uh, handles to, to determine how much like headroom and footroom you have above and below every system of the staff. And you can also use the page layout tool to drag systems down like I'm doing right now to put more room here, right? So I could use that to drag the systems down and up. If I wanted to put more space between systems, I'd go to system number two and drag that down, or system number three and drag that down, system number four, drag that down, and so forth. Tell you what though, I'm gonna go back and show you another way to put space uniformly between systems that you might like just as much or even more. And that's using that staff tool again, right? The same thing we use to get rid of the staff name oboe. I'm going to double click, not single click, but double click, hold and drag the handle of every staff. Notice that every staff has a little box. That's a handle. So when I double click, hold and drag like I'm doing now, 
notice what happens. It opens up the, the spacing uniformly between all of the systems, right? And then if I single click and drag just just that system moves, right? They, all, all of them stay at their, their relative uh, separation. So this might be a good way to get those 16 measures um, to appear like we want them. Now, I would like to have four measures per system. So I'm going to go to the Utilities menu and say Fit Measures. It turns out the default is four measures per system. So if I just say OK, I'm going to get all of a sudden now I have one, two, three, four measures on the first system, one, two, three, four on the second system, one, two, three, four on the third system, and one, two, three, four on the last system. All right, I would like to put a little bit more space between my systems. So I'm going to go back to the Staff tool, double click, hold and drag, and then uh, maybe just drag that first staff, staff system up a little bit. All right. Oh, I want to get rid of the word copyright down below. I'm going to go back to my selection tool and just click on that and hit delete to get rid of that. All right, I've done a fair amount of uh, work. Let me center the title a little bit. There we go. I've done a fair amount of work, so it's time to save. You know, we don't want to lose all the things we've done. So let's go ahead and save. I'll save it on the desktop. And I'm just going to call this Aura Lee Simple Lead. Um, and put it on the desktop, save. You know, we could call it anything, really. Now we have the shell in which we can dump the notes for the simple lead sheet, RLE. All right, now we're ready to enter the notes in. We're going to be using Finale's Speedy Entry Tool. And this is the tool that allows us to select the notes from a MIDI keyboard, you know, press the notes that we want, and then choose the rhythm we want from uh, the numbers on the uh, laptop or, or computer uh, keyboard, the QWERTY keyboard. Let's just go to the Speedy menu and check to make sure it says Use MIDI Device uh, for input, make sure that it's acknowledging that. And also, I like it to jump to the next measure. So when I click on a measure here, and then I fill in this measure, it'll jump to the next measure automatically once it's full. Oh, and one other thing too, just to make sure that the keyboard itself um, is being acknowledged, uh, you might want to go to the MIDI audio menu and then Device Setup and MIDI Internal Speaker Setup. You just want to make sure that it sees the keyboard you're using. I'm using this Casio USB MIDI keyboard. So it, it does acknowledge it or it sees okay, it. Okay, we are ready to enter notes with our speedy entry tool. Um, make sure we press B flat, that first note, because of the key signature is B flat. So as I'm holding the note, I'm going to press the number five, which is the shortcut for a quarter note. And you'll see on screen the keyboard shortcut numbers that I'm using for the rhythms as I put the notes in. So here we go E flat, D, E flat, F, C. F, notice that's a half note, so it's six, then E flat, D, C, D, E flat. Now this half note I add a period to for the dot. To put a rest in, I just don't press anything on my MIDI keyboard, and by pressing the number without choosing a note, it gives us a rest, so five would be the quarter rest. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just use the selection tool and copy these first four measures. You know, go to the edit menu, say copy, and then put my cursor right there, select measure five, go to the edit menu, say paste. And I end up copying because the first and second system have exactly the same notes. Of course, I want to use my selection tool and get rid of this metronome marking, delete. I do want to show you there's another way to do it that Finale has that's kind of unique. And that is to select the measures you want to copy and then just drag and drop them into the next system. And it also copies them for you. And again, we want to get rid of um, that uh, quarter note equals 76 uh, metronome marking. So yeah, there's a couple ways we can copy and paste. You could even, let me undo this, you could even use the keyboard shortcut. Um, by the way, I'm doing shift clicking. I, I click my first measure, hold the shift key down, and then click my last measure in the range, and that's called shift clicking. But I could actually, instead of going to here and choosing copy, I could use Command C. And in instead of from the edit menu choosing paste, I could do Command V. So here I go, Command C. I just copied it. Click on measure five, Command V. I just pasted it. Let me get rid of the metronome marking there. Okay, so that's my first two systems. I'm going to go back to the speedy entry tool and back to choosing my keyboard shortcuts for the rhythms. Okay, and then the last system. Oh, in the last system, let me show you what to do if you make a mistake. So for instance, say I um, play G, um, and then I happen to play, instead of A flat, I play A natural. 
And then I want to go back and fix that. Now I can actually click on the note um, and hit the shortcut for flat, which is the, the minus, um, and I could actually make it flat. Or I could hit the delete key to get rid of it. I got rid of those two beats and then just put in the A flat, right? So there's ways that you can change. Oh, by the way, another way to do um, wrong notes is just to drag them, right? You can drag them to the right note. Or if you had a wrong rhythm in, like say I played that as a half note, here's the A flat, and I wanted it to be a, a quarter note. I could hit the shortcut five while my cursor is on that, that A flat and it turns it into a quarter note. So yeah, all sorts of ways to edit it. Um, last way to edit it is what if I put a rest in by mistake? And I really wanted a G here, right? So I could actually double click on G, watch this, double click, and it puts the, um, the, the, the quarter note G right on that quarter rest. Okay, anyway, so that's editing mistakes. Let's go back to just choosing our notes and our shortcut rhythms. Here I have a dotted half, and then I want a quarter rest here. I could hit the number five. Um, watch this, hit the number five and I get my rest, but it also adds another measure, because remember we had chosen that jump to next measure. So it, it thinks we want another measure. So I'll use my selection tool and delete right that extra measure. But I just wanted to show you that if you didn't want to use the number five, right? So say you're in the last measure, you play the a half note and make it a dotted half note. Just by clicking outside of the frame, Finale will add that rest automatically. It knows you want to complete the measure. Okay, so I basically got all my notes in. I'm going to make sure I save this, either Command S or go to the Edit menu and save, or File menu and save, so we don't lose what we've done. All right, you'll notice that I've cleared all of the notes that I entered using the speedy entry so that I could show you another of Finale's note entry methods, and that is Hyperscribe. Hyperscribe is real-time playing, performing the music to a click track and finale, transcribing it as you go. We're going to choose the Hyperscribe tool, go into the Hyperscribe menu where it says Beat Source, Playback and or Click. Um, if you want to use the playback tempo, if you can play it at that speed, go ahead and use that. If you can't, you can choose a slower tempo. Um, I'm going to down here where it says click and count off. Um, it usually says two measures as the default. It'll give you a two measure count off. I hate waiting two measures, so I like to change it to one measure. So I'm going to only hear one measure of click before I play. And the other thing I'm going to do in the Hyperscribe uh, menu is the Hyperscribe options quantizing. Quantizing is rounding. So for instance, if this had some eighth notes in it, but nothing less than an eighth note, I would round to an eighth note. I happen to know that there's nothing shorter than a quarter note, so we'll, we'll round to the quarter note. It'll help any little inaccuracies that I make when I'm playing. I also know that there's no tuplets, no triplets. So this just helps me be able to play um, and get as good a result as possible the first time. All right, so we're going to say OK to all of that. And now I'll click on the first measure. You'll hear one measure for nothing. And I will record orally. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, rest. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, rest. So this really saves me a lot of time. I'm just playing it in real time. Now I might have to go back and edit out any mistakes I make with the speedy entry tool, but let's see how I do. Okay, I did make a mistake there. One, two, three, and then rest. All right, so what I'll do is I could I could make that um, correction in the second to last measure two different ways. I could just click in it. One, two, three, four. There we go. Okay, so I fixed it. Another way to fix it is just to go to the speedy tool, you know, delete those notes and just put the quarter note with a five, quarter note with a five, right? So I could just step enter or speedy entry those notes in. Let's also get this B flat I missed at the very beginning. I must have come in too early with the click track. So just double click on the B flat and voila, we've taken care of that. And now I have all the notes of RLE using hyperscribe recording and then a little tweaking here or there if you need to with the speedy entry. Okay, the last thing we want to do with this project is adjust the measure numbers. By default, Finale's got the measure numbers at the beginning of every system, but above 
the staff. We want to put them um, as per the, the template or the model that we're trying to follow. We want to put them below the staff. Now we could just take the selection tool and drag individual measure numbers like that below the staff, but I'd rather do it globally just once for all. So we're going to use the measure tool and go to the measure menu and edit measure number regions. And then inside here, where it says um, show on the start of the staff system, yeah, we have that. But the position, right, we're going to drag that position to be below the first uh, or, or the measure and say OK. And then we'll notice that it's where we want them as per uh, what we're trying to do. While I'm talking about measure numbers, what if I wanted the measure numbers on every single measure? I would use the same measure um, tool, edit measure number regions, but here I would say um, show every measure. Uh, by the way, I'm going to turn off that top staff for this because I'm going to say show every one measure beginning with measure one. Where do I want them? I want them at the beginning of each staff system. OK. And then say OK. And now I've got exactly what I want, right? Every measure number is now indicated, except for measure one. And the reason measure one was not indicated is because, because back here, um, we said hide first measure number in a region. We could have actually shown that, right? And then we would have measure one. Um, individual measure numbers can be moved around. So if they're in the way of a note or a dynamic or something, you can drag the measure numbers. But for this project, I'm just going to go back to having them at the beginning of each staff system because that's the, the model that we're trying to follow for this particular lead sheet. And now if we want to print it, we can go to the file menu, we can send it to a printer. Um, we can say print the score is the lead sheet. So we'd say print the score. If we're worried about it fitting on the, the, um, the, the paper that we're printing it on, you can say fit to page. If you're going to print it to PDF, you go down here and say save as PDF, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to save it on the desktop as a PDF. And then let's go ahead and take a look at it, right? So out on the desktop is our RLE simple lead sheet score. And there's the PDF that we just made. Looks just like the finale. All right, there we have it. We did a simple lead sheet project where we entered the melody for the folk song RLE. Uh, we did step entry as one way to put it in the notes and hyperscribe is the other way to put in the notes. We also showed you how to edit any errors you'd make and some formatting things with measure numbers and systems and spacing between systems so that the lead sheet would look professional. Good luck with Finale.